Hi everyone, welcome to Late Night Research Methods. I am SM and I'm going to take you through a couple of research methods that you need to know for your ACE Psychology exam. And today we are going to talk about hypothesis, uh, the alternative hypothesis and the null, also the non-directional and directional hypothesis. Okay, so we have a lot of different terms that we can use when we are talking about hypotheses. We can say, is it a null or an alternative hypothesis? We can also say, is it a directional or uh, non-directional hypothesis? Um, we can also say, is it a one-tailed hypothesis or a two-tailed hypothesis? Now, here's a clue for you. One-tailed and two-tailed is the same meaning as directional and non-directional. So let's get right into what a hypothesis is. So if you notice that a lot of the experiments in these 12 studies have aims and they have hypotheses, some might just show you the aim depending on the book, um, but they all have aims and hypotheses. And an aim is just a statement, something that we want to see happen in the study, where a hypothesis is a testable aim. All right, and here's a good example for you because Baron Cohen's study has three aims and it has five hypotheses. So although he only aimed to see three different things happen, he basically broke some of those down into different hypotheses so we can say at the end of the day that we proved it or disproved the hypotheses. Okay, so aim three of Baron Cohen's study basically says that we want to test whether females are going to score better on the eyes test than males. So that's what we're aiming to see, that males are going to score lower than females. Now, how do we create a testable hypothesis? Well, if you look um, at Baron Cohen's, one of his five hypotheses, it states, I think it's number four, states that females in the normal group two and three will score higher on the reading of the mind's eyes test than males in those same two and three group. All right, so I'll read it again. Females in the normal group two and three will score higher on reading of the mind's eyes than males in those two groups. So something that you can think about when I when I made that statement is that we are specifically saying that females are going to score higher than males on the reading of the mind's eyes test. Now that is a really good example of a one-tailed hypothesis or a directional hypothesis. So um, it's important to know that a directional hypothesis is most likely going to happen in an experiment, all right, where we can control some type of variables, um, maybe we have some previous research that's already hinting to us that um, one is going to score higher or score better or have an increased effect than another variable. And in this case, in Baron Cohen's study with theory of mind and autism, we have previous research. So here we have a one directional hypothesis. All right. Um, so a one directional hypothesis is stating that there will be a change and it will be caused by one variable over another. Okay, so here's an example with caffeine and memory. Um, caffeine will increase memory of students in eighth block psychology. Okay, so you know the direction in which we are looking. You know that we are talking about caffeine. Even if you wanted to introduce another variable like um, milk, you can say caffeine will produce a higher memory score on an exam than milk. All right, so we are specifically saying that one will do better or be higher or increase or make better change than another. Okay, that's directional or one-tailed. Think of a cat. A cat has one-tailed. You know what direction it's moving in, right? Because the head's in the front and it's going that way. Now, let's talk about a two-tailed hypothesis. Um, or a non-directional. Now let's think of that cat again. So a non-directional is like a cat with two tails. So instead of a head, not two tails on the back, but a tail where the head would be and a tail where the tail is. Now if you see this, one, take a picture, <laughs> but think about what direction you think that cat is going to move in. Do you have a clear view of the direction is which, which way is forward? And we don't really know that. And that's what we use non-directional hypotheses for. And mainly we are looking at correlational studies when we talk about non-directional hypotheses. And that's because we don't have a lot of evidence um, to back up, you know, a confident statement or we can't 
manipulate the variables. So we are doing a correlational study. Okay, so a non-directional is still stating that there will be an effect. So the independent variable is going to cause a change in the dependent variable, but we don't know which variable is going to be better or faster or produce a higher score. So let's go back to that caffeine and milk on memory. Now in a non-directional, I'm going to say there will, be, there will be a change in memory score between participants that drink milk and participants that drink caffeine. Did you notice the difference in those two? All right, so I'll say that directional one again. Caffeine will produce higher scores than milk on a memory test, non-directional. There will be a difference in memory scores between those who drink caffeine and those who drink milk. Okay, so you see that difference there? Now, the big key in the non-directional is the word, I always like to use the word difference. There will be a difference or there will be a change. Okay, so we're not exactly giving away that we believe that one is going to score better than the other because technically we don't really know. So that's why we're using a non-directional in the first place. Okay, so hope you guys got that. Last thing I'm going to talk about is null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is basically the negative Nancy of all of your friends. She is the one or he is the one that says, no way, it's not going to happen. If anything happens, it'll be due to chance, not because your experiment actually worked. So you might be asked on the exam to write a null hypothesis from an alternative hypothesis that they give you. So if I, um, and you can do this with a directional and a non-directional, and um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. First of all, you can basically make a statement that says, um, any change in memory score due to caffeine is uh, because of chance. Okay, so by throwing the word because of chance uh, or due to chance at the end of your hypothesis is going to make it a null. Also, you can use the word no or not. Um, so if I'm going to say that caffeine will produce a change, a null hypothesis is just going to say that caffeine will not produce a change. Okay, so let's go back to that one directional and let's make it a null hypothesis. Okay, so caffeine will not improve memory or we can say any improvement in memory due to caffeine is because of chance got that all right now a non-directional um, let's use the milk and the caffeine now the alternative again is there will be a change in memory scores with participants that drink milk or drink caffeine <clears throat> now let's turn that into a null there will be no difference in memory scores from participants that drink milk or drink caffeine okay or any difference in memory scores between participants who drink milk or caffeine is due to chance all right i hope you guys got that if you need any more help with a psychology uh let me know comment below if you have any questions about hypotheses you can look at my other videos where i go over um, the 12 studies in depth and evaluate it for you. I run out of a lot of time during the day, so I started doing these late night research methods for you to give you a little bit more insight. Now, you can get through the studies by having moderate information on research methods, but I'll tell you, you're not going to be able to get to the exam without it. So if you need any extra help, you can find me on Instagram at apsychology9990. Um, I am also on Facebook. You can also uh, send me an email at apsychology9990 at gmail.com. And if you need even more help and you feel like you're all alone in this, just send me an email with the subject line Google Classroom and I will give you free access to my Google Classroom where you will find study guides, answer keys, you will find um, vocab, strengths and weaknesses of those vocabs, the original studies, even quizzes and tests. And um, they're the good kind because they're going to help you pass your test. They're not graded. So you can take them as many times as you want. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And stay tuned for some more late night research methods.